Thanks for tuning in. Pastor John here. We're in the series called Go Time. That's what the church should be all about. It's it's go time for us because Jesus did his go time in winning our salvation. And he sends us out on a going mission to share that good news with other people. Well, today's message seven in the series, and it's this. It's time to toughen up. It's what disciples needed to do before they went out. They needed to be tough so they wouldn't give up and quit. And it's important that we understand that or else that's what's going to happen. The first minute persecution comes or someone gets angry or doesn't agree with us, then we'll want to quit instead of just hanging in there and watching God work as there'll be times when it'll be in season and out of season. So if you have your Bible, look up Ezekiel chapter 2, 1 to 5. It's Ezekiel's call to be a prophet. Uh, 2 Timothy 4, 1 to 5. It's Paul encouraging young Timothy to preach the word and to endure the hardships that will come. And then Mark chapter 6, verses 1 to 13. And you'll see Jesus uh, helping to toughen up his disciples as he takes them to his own hometown where Jesus is rejected by his own family and people who are there. So get ready for a powerful message. I know this one's for you. Hi, and welcome. Katrina Watkins here. You're back with another powerful message with First Lutheran Church. I'd like to say a huge welcome back to Pastor and Karen. They were out of town visiting with family, and I hope we got an A-plus while they were out of town. The church is still standing. Monday, July the 8th, LWML will be meeting at 1230 in the Fellowship Hall. Any women that are available, you're all invited to meet. We'll see you there. Speaking of LWML, congratulations are in order. They've been awarded the LWML Mid-South District Grant. Congratulations, ladies. Your hard work is amazing. This Monday, we'll be serving at the Jackson House. There are plenty of opportunities to help get connected if you would like to help, contact myself or Miss Linda Colley and we can get you connected. We will resume watching Chosen Season 4, Tuesday, July the 9th. We will be showing at 10.30 and at 6.30 every Tuesday. There's two opportunities to get connected. Come and watch these exciting episodes and we'll discuss and reflect on Jesus' ministry from each episode. We'll see you there. This week, we will be welcoming back Jerry and Valerie Backus all the way from Tanzania. They're also going to be bringing along baby Tommy. So with that being said, July the 14th, we'll be having our congregational potluck where they will update us on uh, baby Tommy and everything going on at the orphanage there in Tanzania. So if you'd like to participate in our congregational potluck, there's a sign-up sheet out front. We'd love to have you and love to see you there. If you want to find out all things going on here at First Lutheran Church, go over to www.flchsar.com and there you'll find all things going on right here at First Lutheran and even sermon notes for today's sermon. If you're a visitor or a member, we have Connect Cards. We'd love to know that you're worshiping with us or if you have a special need or if you need us to pray for you. Write it on the back of that Connect Card and we'd love to know and we'd love to pray and touch and agree with you. It looks like it's time for service to get started. Pastor John, take it away. Lord Jesus, we honor you in your house. There's no place we'd rather be than in your presence to express our love for you and to receive the love that you have for us, uh, spoken through your word, received in your very body and blood, and experienced in the fellowship of your people. So bless this time. Build us up in that most holy faith. Holy Spirit, work through these means as you do to give us strong faith, trust, love, joy, peace, patience, all the things we need to prosper well in the kingdom. So we ask your blessing in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Sing our opening hymn. Open now the gates of beauty.
Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, hear my prayer. Listen to my cry for mercy. Listen to my cry for mercy. In your faithfulness and righteousness, come to my relief. The enemies pursue me. He crushes me to the ground. He makes me dwell in the darkness like those long dead. So my spirit grows strength within me. My heart within me is I remember the days of long ago. I meditated on all your works and considered what your hands have done. Let the morning bring me word of your unfailing love, for I have put my trust in you. Show me the way I should go, for to you I trust my life. Rescue me from my enemies, Lord, for I hide myself in you. May we use this time for silence, for reflection on God's word, and for self-examination. confess our sins together. Merciful Father, we confess that we have sinned against you in our thoughts, word, and deed. We are not made content with your grace and strength, but have followed our own ways. Forgive us our sins. God is merciful, and, in, and even before we were aware of our sins, he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to give his life in payment for our sins. As a called servant of the word, I can announce the forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Gracious Lord, your son You may be seated as we sing our next hymn.
said couldn't be here, so you get me today, a reader. Our first lesson comes from Ezekiel chapter 2, verses 1 to 5. He said to me, Son of man, stand up on your feet, and I will speak to you. As he spoke, the Spirit came into me and raised me to my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. He said, Son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites, to a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have been in revolt against me to this very day. The people to whom I am sending you are obstinate and stubborn. Say to them, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. And whether they listen or fail to listen, for they are a rebellious people, they will know that a prophet has been sent, had been among them. This is the word of the Lord. Our second lesson comes from 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 to 5. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I give you this charge. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. For the time will come when people will not put up a sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. But you, keep your head in all situations, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, discharge all the duties of your ministry. This too is the word of the Lord. We rise for our Alleluia verse. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the sixth chapter. Jesus left there and went to his hometown, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were amazed. Where did this man get these things, they asked? What's this wisdom that has been given to him? What are these remarkable miracles he is performing? Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? Aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own town and among his relatives and in his own town, in his own home. He could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. He was amazed at their lack of faith. Then Jesus went around teaching from village to village, calling the twelve to him and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over impure spirits. These were his instructions. Take nothing for the journey except a staff. No bread, no bag, no money in your belts. Wear sandals but not an extra shirt. Whenever you enter a house and stay there, stay there until you leave that town. And if any place will not welcome you or listen to you, leave that place and shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. They went out and preached that people should repent. They drove out many demons and anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. This is the gospel of the Lord. boldly confess our faith together today as we speak these words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven 
and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. We sing our next hymn.
Onward, go time. Soldier in God's army with a mission to complete a battle to fight people to rescue out of the dominion of darkness. Did you know there was a move in, I think back in the 60s or 70s, to get this song out of the hymn book? They were tired of war. They didn't want anything to do. They just wanted to sit back and take life easy because they thought war was bad, but we're called to warfare, and we are soldiers in God's army, and he calls us onward to the battle lines where the action takes place. So Lord Jesus, speak to us through your word today that not only do we sing the song, we live the truth. We walk in your ways to the glory of your name. In your name, Jesus. Amen. We're actually in message seven now in our series, Go Time. You're going to be shocked by how many messages we got with Go Time. How many things apply to go time? Most of the Bible is about the go time. God created the world and redeemed the world and he poured out his spirit and now it's us. We're here. 2,000 years almost. We've been in go time and God has a lot to say about going in his name. Well, today is this. It's time to tough it up. How many of you ever had someone say words to that affect you? Or, unless you haven't been listening to Wayne. <laughs> Time to toughen up. I remember the first time I, I heard those words. It was kind of like yesterday. It was when I went out for high school football back in the ninth grade. Back then, we didn't have peewee league, so this was my first experience with tackle football. And what a shocker it was. I can honestly say I lived a very sheltered life up to that point. Boy, did things change quickly. We started out in the summer with two-a-days. Not good. Hot. Face in the grass. I still hate the smell of freshly cut grass to this day. Then we did, we ran, we did blocking drills, we did tackling drills, we did kickoff drills, then we put on the pads. And it really got rough, especially for a shy, light, naive ninth grader going against these big, aggressive, seasoned seniors. They put us all together and they loved it. <laughs> the seniors were saying, come on. This fresh meat, this, this is a, a, this, I live for this. I get to knock somebody down. And all of it was for this one purpose. It was to toughen us up and prepare us for playing in a real game. At the time, I didn't understand that. I just did it. <laughs> it's what you do when they're telling you what to do. But now I see how important it was for game day. Because you see, if we wouldn't have done that, we wouldn't have played after the kickoff. Somebody hit me, and I fell down, and I quit. See, people would want to quit after they got their first hard hit, first hard tackle. The first time somebody stepped on your hand because you're down on your, in your stance, and they were first to step out and they got cleats on and all these things that go on in a football game. See, going through it in practice and toughening up was an important part of getting ready for the real game and learning what to do. That's why we did the drills. How do you do these things? How does this game really work? But now I see how important it was. Not only that, for, but also for facing life's challenges be toughened up. And especially when it comes to living for Christ and sharing our faith with others. In 2 Timothy 3, Paul comes right out and says these words. He says, everyone who wants to give, live a godly life will be persecuted. They're coming for you. 
They're going to come to put you down like you're wearing shoulder pads and knee pads and hip thigh pads. And they're ready to knock you down. Whoever wants to live a godly life will be persecuted. And so do you want to live a godly life? Then you better toughen up. The alternative is not good either. It's worse. So Paul says, get ready. You got to know this truth about life. Don't be surprised by the hatred and persecution you face, but be ready, ready for it. Prepare for it when it happens so that it doesn't overwhelm you. Be ready in here and in here for being persecuted, for being in a game. They come after you, they hit you, they hit you from behind. Jesus told disciples the same thing in John chapter 16, verse 33. After telling them about how hard it was going to be once he ascended, he really didn't, they didn't understand all that. But he tells them it's going to get hard. And then he says this, I have told you these things so that in me you will have peace. I want you to be ready for it. And that in me you will have peace. In this world you will have trouble. Trouble. Hey, if they hate me, they're going to hate you. You're going to have trouble in this world. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Jesus prepared his disciples for game day, for go time, for being his witnesses, for making disciples. He did it then by teaching them what to do like a good coach. This is how you do this drill. This is how you do these things. And also telling them about the hardships that would come so that they would not quit when the first hit came. And I say that because this is what we really see in all three of our lessons today. Ezekiel chapter 2. God's calling Ezekiel to be his prophet. He fills them with the Holy Spirit and he tells them this. He says, Son of man, I'm sending you to the Israelites, to a rebellious nation. They're bad. And they have been in revolt to me to this very day. They're fighting against me. And if they're fighting against me and I'm sending them, you to them, guess what they're going to do to you? They're probably going to revolt. They are obstinate and stubborn. Know anyone like that? Obstinate and stubborn people? They're not moving for no one. And I'm sending you to them. Those people who are obstinate and stubborn with my word. Because I want them. That's why you got to be ready. That there's going to be persecution. Hatred, hardship, all these things. When you live for me and live on mission. He says, say to them what I tell you. And whether they listen or not, they will know that a prophet has been among them. They will know it when the things happen that I tell you to warn them about. If not, they'll see it at the very end when they stand in front of me and they know it for sure. God calls, instructs, prepares Ezekiel for rejection and for hardship he'll face on the mission being given to him and being God's prophet. God is really toughening up Ezekiel to get him ready for what's to come. 2 Timothy chapter 4, Paul says the same thing to young Timothy. He's young. In fact, he's telling them, you know, fan into flame the gift that you receive. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Don't, don't be afraid because you're loved. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. But set an example for them so they see what following me and living in me really looks like. That's one of my favorite passages. Just set the example for them. He tells them about the mission issues he's going to face and how he would need to toughen up. Listen to what he says again. He says, in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus. That's what it's all about. 
He's the author and giver of this mission and who will one day come to judge the world and bring about his eternal kingdom with a new heaven and a new earth. That's what he goes on to say. This is who this is from. I give you this charge. This is your purpose. This is what you're here to do. Preach the word. It is the word of God that stands forever. It is the word of God that does not change. It is the word of God that is truth. It's what people need to hear is the word. Preach the word. He says, be prepared. Toughen up. Get ready. In season and out of season. What does that mean? Yeah. When the strawberries are ripe and even when they're not. Whether people want to hear or people don't want to hear what you have to say, be prepared to speak my word, to tell them the truth, to preach the word they need to hear what I have to say. Correct. How many love to be corrected? Raise your hand. What happens when somebody tries to correct you? Man, they come right back at you, don't they? You try to correct somebody, they're, they're going to put you down. They're going to beat you up. And we kind of do the same thing to other people when they try to correct rebuke. It's another great word. This is his call. Correct rebuke. Encourage. Lift up. With great patience and careful instruction, which means do it in the loving, my kind of way. Because people keep going in the wrong direction, what's going to happen? It's not good. They need correct, course, direct correction, course correction all the time. They need someone to say, Stop, Will Robinson, danger. Don't go there. All these things God is telling Timothy through Paul is out of great love for people. Even though they're acting bad, I want them to hear about me. And I really want them all. It says, do these things. Correct, rebuke, encourage with great patience, careful instruction, and keep at it. It's not a one and done. We like to be one and done. Pop it in the microwave, and then it's done. One and done. Push the button. Here you go. Thank you. It's a keep on, keep on, preach the word, ongoing activity. Amen. For a time will come when people will not listen to you. Instead, to make themselves happy and to feel good about themselves. That's my interpretation. How did he say it? For a time will come when people will not put up a sound doctrine instead to suit their own desires. They will gather around themselves a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. Make me happy. Just make me feel good about myself. Don't warn me about the danger of how I'm living. Don't correct my course because I have worked my whole life to build this rut in this void that I put my life how I want it. Don't mess me up. Else I'll get somebody else who will tell me what I want to hear. Yeah. I'm just bringing it in today's life. I said, I'll quit the church and go find someone who will say what I want them to say. And then I'm going to find it at that church and go, oh no, I've got to go to another church. Oh no, I'm just going to watch on TV and turn the volume down. <laughs> It's because we have the sinful nature, we got an enemy, and we live in a world that's pulling us always in that direction. And saying, you're the God of your own life. You decide. You make your life all about you. And scripture is no. We deny ourselves. We take up our cross and we follow Jesus. We surrender all to you, Jesus. Whatever your word says, it's all about you. So 
And that's what he's saying. That, you know, people are going to reject you. That's what he's saying to Timothy. Don't be surprised. They're, they're not going to like what you're going to say. They're going to try to find somebody who will say what they want them to say and do what they want them to do. They're not going to put up with truth, the things that are needed. They're going to try to find people to make them happy and feel good about themselves. That's my interpretation of modern day paraphrase. You know what a paraphrase is? <coughs> I get to say what the Bible says kind of in my own kind of way and make it, post, make, make it modern. They will turn away from the truth and believe lies and made up stories. That's what a myth is. It's a made up stories. He says, but you, keep your head in all situations. Keep your head on straight. Live with that renewed mind. I've told you what everything is. I've given you this mind and this heart. Keep your head. Don't lose. Don't panic. Don't live in fear. Oh, no. What if our numbers go down? What if people get mad? Endure. What does endure mean? Put up with it. Embrace it. Just do it. Persevere. Endure hardship. When these things come, he says, just take it. It's okay. I see you. I know you. I've called you. It's my mission. It's really not yours. I, you co-labor with me in the mission, but I'm, the mission is about me. Do the work of an evangelist, which means... Tell people about the good news, about me, about Jesus. He's actually inviting you out of darkness into light, out of lies into truth, out of the world that will just be destroyed into a kingdom that will last forever. It's really good news. Discharge all the duties of your ministry. But you're saying to Timothy, Timothy, don't do it all yourself. <laughs> I'm giving you all these people. They're a part of it. That's what I've called them to. Discharge the duties of your ministries. Another place he tells the Ephesians, equip the saints for ministry. That they can go to maturity. That the kingdom as a body grows and matures as each one does its work. Ephesians chapter 4. Paul faced hardships, lots of them, and he knew Timothy would too. So he says, Timothy, get ready. You need to toughen up. There's alligators out there. And you're living in the swamp. Just be ready. Then in Mark chapter 6, we see Jesus preparing his disciples the same way. See, if you look at it from this Paradigm. He's preparing them, toughening up for the mission that would happen once he's gone. Where does he take them? He takes them to his hometown. If you want to see what it looks like, let me show you. Takes them to his hometown. And on the Sabbath, when Jesus teaches in the synagogue, they, they, see, they see how some are just amazed at Jesus. Wow! Where'd you get this teaching? Where did, where'd you get this understanding and the miracles you do? Where did this all come from? And then others took offense at him. Wait a second. Isn't that Mary's son? Don't we know his brothers and his sisters? He's just like one of them. Who does he think he is? The familiar spirit. Anthony brings it out. We get familiar with people. And we stop listening. Sometimes that's a good thing about a pastor coming and going every three to five years. Then you're not familiar with his ways. But there's benefits in staying. And pushing through the issues that people need to, to go through for the church to be who it's supposed to be. Mark 
Many, because they were familiar with Jesus and his family, had a hard time believing him. That's why Jesus tells them, a prophet is not without honor. Wherever he goes, except in his own town, among his relatives, and in his own home. How many have ever found out that that is true? <laughs> Preaching to your kids, to your wife. they know you too well. They're not going to listen to you so well. That's why sometimes the best thing to do is just love them and pray for them. And say, God, get them and use somebody else. <laughs> because they won't listen to me. That's okay. If you call me to go and, and do it, I'll do it. But yeah. I think Jesus is showing them that you're not going to have much success. Even Jesus in his hometown could only do a few miracles and heal a few sick people and he was amazed at their lack of faith because that's what familiarity does it steals faith then he sends out the twelve two by two he gives them authority over evil spirits and oftentimes they Sickness, there's an evil spirit behind it, and that's why they healed some when we get to the end. But that's included. But he says nothing else. I'm not giving you anything else. Don't take, you can take a staff, but no bread, no bag, no money. I want you to learn to trust me on the journey. I don't want you to rely on your own ability in this. I'm sending you out, so trust me. Then he lets them know that they may not be received. As you go, they might not receive you in my name. And if that happens, they were to shake off the dust off their feet and move on where maybe others would. But I'm still sending you to them. Like a prophet, that they would know that a prophet had been among them, that, that God really did care about me because he had sent somebody to me in my life who would speak the truth. Who would tell me what I need to know about Jesus and life in his kingdom. See, this is life on the mission. We don't know what kind of reception we'll get. There'll be hard times, hard things among the good as we go on this mission. It's what Jesus faced and endured for us. He came to that which was his own, but his own would not receive him. But all to who would receive him, he gave the right to become children of God. He wants us all. Rejected by his own town, persecuted by the Pharisees. Not everyone listened to him. That's what Jesus did for us. He lived that tough life and pressed on toward the goal of the cross for us. That's why we do it for others he did it for us. If our motivation is they need it, we'll probably quit after the first try. Let them get it from somebody else. But if we do it because Jesus did it for us and he kept on, we can look at our life and see where he kept coming, kept sending people, he kept Drawing us in, correcting, rebuking, encouraging, and, and bringing us on this path. Because he wants us. And so at times, as individuals, as a church, we're going to get persecuted. We're going to face hardships. We're going to... enemy's going to want to discourage us and get us to quit. And Jesus the whole time is saying, no, I want you to toughen up. Because yeah. I did it for you. That's what life in the mission is. It's going to be that way. But it's worth it. And so as I resolve to share the good news of Jesus, I can endure the hardships that will come. Knowing simply that they are a part of living 
for Jesus. There will be hardship. There will be persecution in living for him. But when I make that resolve, that, Lord, I want to do what you want me to do. I'm here for the kingdom. I'm here for the mission. I can endure it. Secondly, I can also embrace the rejections that will come. Rejections are, I don't want you and I don't want what you're selling. I don't want to listen to you no more. I reject you. I reject you. I'm leaving. I'm quitting. I'm going. I don't want you no more. But rejections, too, are part of living for Jesus in the kingdom. Jesus talked about a family would be divided. Three against two. Two against three. That's a part of living for Jesus. As he was rejected by all, he came to that which was his own. Finally, as I resolve to share the good news of Jesus, I can engage in the opportunities that will come because they're going to be a part of it too. Opportunities where people receive, where they thank us, where they get made whole, healed, delivered, set free, blessed with Jesus. Steve comes to our Saturday morning men's group We've seen people get transformed in front of our eyes. But they would get mad and they would quit and come back. Because they knew they were missing something. And we're seeing fruit. We're seeing fruit in our own lives because we're getting more truth. We're getting, we're getting an understanding of what living free in this world as a follower of Christ is all about. What is our purpose and mission? And all of a sudden, people who have been so wounded are healed and whole and they're helping other people. It's set free. It's just awesome. See, there's going to be opportunities. And when they happen, you'll say, man, it was worth it. Jesus, look what you have done. Look how their lives are changed. Look at the joy they now have because of you. And I got to be used by you for such a great thing. So in the go time, got to toughen up. Maybe we should have two-a-day practices. Outside, in the heat, putting on them shoulder pads. I just want to point out Wayne. He played a real game against who? Earl? Earl Campbell. One of the toughest, meanest, not meanest, but great guy. But one of the toughest, he had, he had legs, thighs as big. <laughs> when he ran you over, it went really quick. He didn't struggle. But see, practice, toughen up, made you ready for a game where you would have in contact and everybody didn't walk off the field. He said, I'm going to get up and get going because this is what I'm here for. It's for the game, this game day. So Lord Jesus, bless us with that kind of heart, that resolve that is tough. That okay is okay with the persecutions, the hardships, the rejections, because that's what you did for us. And that you'll give us opportunities where things will go good. And we'll see your kingdom come and your will being done. So help us get ready for game day. As you toughen us up through your word, in your name, Jesus. Amen. We worship the Lord with our offering.
Man, go time. Time to toughen up. Pastor had his football story, and I look back at Miss Sharon right there, and I thought about your grandson, Austin Hurl. I tell you, you guys, he was seven years old. He was our center in football, Pastor. He practiced with us, and we practiced. Big kid. But I never put a nose guard in front of him to get hit. So our very first game, Big Austin is on the field. His first snap of the ball, Austin get hit right in the nose with his face mask. Austin comes off the field crying, the biggest thing out there. He did not know they was going to hit him. But do you know, after that, Austin got back in the game. Austin toughened up over the years. And when I seen Austin at First Lutheran Church, when he came in through there, little Austin, I said, yes, sir. <laughs> but he toughened up, and that's a life lesson. That's a wonderful message, Pastor. Man, it's not how we start, it's how we finish, man. But to toughen up, Christ is there for us. And our weakness, he is made strong. Amen. Let us stand, let us pray for the church. Good word. Turn to God, we just thank you for your word on today, Father. For it's go time. It's time for us as the body to toughen up. To toughen up for the mission, Father. To toughen us up, Father, that we may be able to engage in the ministry, Father. To be able to engage when things are not even going the way we plan on them going, Father. When there's hard times, tough times, that we roll up our sleeves and we continue to keep on keeping on, Father. For we know that our rewards are great in heaven. So, Father, we thank you for the word on today and to help us to embrace Embrace, Father, any type of rejection along the way. For we know that some people are going to want to hear what we're going to have to say, and some people won't. But like your word says, Father, let us shake the dust off our feet. Let us not take it at heart, for it's not us that they're denying, but it's you. And so we pray for their souls, Father. When we are rejected, let us still be able to lift those up that reject us, Father. Now, Father, we pray that you continue to encourage us, Father, as we engage in every opportunity that's handed our way, Father, that we are equipped for the mission to be tough enough to approach any opportunities our way. Now, Father, be with us as we go out into the mission field visiting those that are sick, those that are hurting. Give us the words to say, Father, to uplift their spirits, Father. Touch them right where they're at. Continue to dispatch your angels to minister to them. We pray for all those having birthdays and anniversaries. Continue to bless and watch over and protect them, Lord. We pray for all those that have authority over us, Father. We pray, Father, that you give them the wisdom and the knowledge, Father, to lead your people in the godly fashion. Now, Father, we just thank you and praise you. We thank you for this word on today, Father, here at First Lutheran Church. Let us not just be hearers of your word, but let us be doers of your word. For it's go time. And let us, as a body, toughen up for the ministry. And we'll give you all the glory and all the praise. Now, Father, we close out with the prayer that you have taught us to pray, and that prayer is, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I pray that God spoke to you through the message today about times in your life when you wanted to quit, when you got so hard that you didn't think you were doing any good. But God is there, and uh, he will bring the fruit from whatever things that you do in his name. So if we can be a blessing to you, give us a call. Love to encourage you. 
bless you and, and help you in the journey. Our number is 501-525-0322. And uh, if you want to join us live on Sunday morning, our Facebook page is First Lutheran Church Hot Springs AR. And we come on at 8.30 and 11 o'clock Central Time here in Hot Springs, Arkansas. So God bless you. Get out there and go. Watch God work. He'll give you strength for whatever you face. See you next time.